Sims, you're here today requesting that this court grant you a paternity test to prove that the defendant, Mr. Doris, the man who is on your birth certificate, is not your biological father. That's correct. Mr. Doris, you say that you are heartbroken that Ms. Sams claims you are not her father and say there is no need for a paternity test. You know you are her biological father and you've never been told differently. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. Now, the court must decide if there is sufficient evidence to order a paternity test in this case. Ms. Sams, why do you need the court to order this test? Well, Your Honor, in 2009, I believe, I went and had a family function with my uh, mother's side of the family. I was speaking with my uncles, and my uncle said to me, how's your daddy doing since he got out of prison? So I said, what do you mean? My dad's never been in prison. Whoa. And I said, who do you think my daddy is? And he said the other man's name. And I said, we were having some drinks. So I was just, you know, okay, well, I'm gonna see Mr. Doris tomorrow, so I'll talk to him about it. So we were sitting at my grandmother's house at the time, um, his mother, and I said to him, the other man's name, and I said, what is this that I hear about this other man? And he said, I never want to hear that name out of your mouth again. And it was ended just like that. And this was the first time ever in your life that you heard anything like this? Not exactly. When my sister and I were both pregnant at the exact same time, um, we were making comments back and forth to my mom because of blood work that had happened. Our lab work was done about the same time. And there were factors in one of our pregnancies that would typically only be if we had the same mother and father. So at that time, I said something to my mom about it. And my mom laughed about it. And she was like, well, you know, there was this time in my life and, you know, things were crazy and kind of laughing. But at that time, she still maintained that Mr. Doris was your biological father. Never really talked about it. Like, just kind of but dropped she knows, it. She, she, she knows that she would have told you. Well, she did, wasn't. She did, but right before she died, she said, I think that you need to have this done. So why would she say that? Turned what does she before? say to you exactly, Miss Sams? She said, well, if you have that feeling and we've had all this information, it, it, you need to be tested and you need to find out. And she Mr. said Doris, that because she just wanted you to be ensured that I am your dad. Mr. Doris, you've had no doubts all this time. You firmly believe you are Miss Sam's biological father. Yes, Your Honor, I do. I was at the hospital when she was born, her first breath. I got the uh, birth certificate. And I'd I like to see that. Jerome. Thank you. You're welcome. This is a certificate of birth for Diane Doris. And you're listed as father. You have pictures in your hand. What are these pictures of, Mr. Doris? Me and her, my little girl. Beautiful father-daughter pictures. That's a beautiful picture. However, I don't doubt any of that. I know that he was there when I was born. I'm aware that he's on my birth certificate. I have to know what is going on. I, for my sake, I need to know. No doubt in my mind. And you get very emotional when Miss Sams begins to talk about her doubt. Yes, Your Honor. I'm entitled to my feelings as well, and I'm entitled to the facts. And I need to know this. I need to know this. For me, I need to know. That's why I need your help. I need you to help me and do this test for me. It is so important. I just need to know. Mr. Doris, what was the nature of your relationship with Miss Sam's mother? Uh, I met her at a bar, and we just clicked right off the bat. I mean, we were together like three months, and we ended up getting married. Really? Yes. She was not pregnant when I met her. Okay. She wasn't sleeping with no one else but me. Okay, so you met her, you had sex with her, and then three months later, you got married. You know when you married my mom? I think it was October 77. No, you did not. You married my mom June of 1979 in Oklahoma. 
Well, I know we were married in Oklahoma. So you married her. So we had sex right? before then. Yeah, you just said three months before then. No. We had sex in 77. Three months later, I assume we got married. No, you Maybe got married it... in 79, in June of 19. She's saying you got married almost two years later. Yeah, I had I have the marriage certificate. I have their marriage certificate and We're... divorce decree from my mother's previous marriage to another man that she didn't divorce until April of 1979. This is why I have so many doubts. He just confirms it by he doesn't remember things. Obviously, he doesn't even remember when he married her. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Do not hear what you said about when you were married to my mom, and I'm telling you when you were married, but I am not incorrect about these dates. This is harbored in my heart for years now, and I know my dates about this stuff. I know when my children were conceived. I know when I was conceived approximately, and you're off by two years for crying out loud. Yeah, well, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, well, I ain't got the, the best memory in the world. What she's saying is because you're not clear on all of the facts, it only just increases her doubt that maybe your assertion that you're her biological father is not... It's not firm. It's not accurate. Well, she's telling but, me I'm the only one she slept with. But, well, <laughs> Miss... When we got but what, Miss Sam, right? I need you to understand that whether they were married or not, you they still, still could have conceived absolutely, you, of course. I absolutely understand And he's that. just presented your birth certificate, which means he was present when you were born. Your Honor, I honestly believe there was good reason for that. If there was a reason why my mother wanted him to be my father and didn't have the other man as my father, there was a very good reason for it. The other man, in 1978, in October of 1978, and did not go to prison until... Well, he did, went to jail, and then he got bonded out. So, for trial. For trial. And that would make sense why my mom would not want that man in my life. So after 33 years, you want to bring us up now? I've been bringing it up. You just don't listen. So I'm just putting all this out there like I'm trying to figure it out in my own head. Why they would do this to me. And it is confusing. It's the biggest confusing mess ever. My mom was married seven times and was single the last 10 years of her life. I have several siblings. It's just crazy to me. My whole life is just a crazy mess. And I need one thing answered for my children and for myself. I need this answered. It's only fair. And now, a couple of years ago, I was diagnosed with mixed connective tissue disease. And I need to know what side of the family I, I came from so that my cousins on my mom's side of the family could potentially know what... If they need to be tested and keep up with the blood work and find out if they're carrying mixed connective tissue to disease and they have the ADA high levels like me. And it, they took them. I was diagnosed 10 years later than I should have been. And my doctor has said, my rheumatologist has said, it is genetics or it's predominantly diagnosed in African-American women in childbearing age or in postmenstrual. Mr. Doris, does this particular disease run in your family? No, Your Honor. It does not? No. After my mom died, things got really, really, really interesting because I went to clean out her home and do what I needed to do. And um, I found a document that in 1980, my mother amended a birth certificate. Really? What? And... I have that proof right here. Jerome, may I see that proof, please? I don't know if it was because of a spelling error. I don't know why it would have been amended, but, like, I, I have so many questions. I don't get it. So this is paperwork from the state of California indicating that there were additional certified copies of a newly amended birth certificate. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Doris, you were never told by her mother, informed, or received any notice about an amendment. No. Hearsay is saying that I'm not your dad. 
I I'm here telling you, I am here. Dad. Did you not just see an amended document? Well, I know you... I was there when you were born, and I know she, that well, doesn't she, mean. Well, she told me she was not sleeping with anyone else. Your mom told him there was no one else. It's just all he knows. It's the information he has. I want to hear from your witness, though. Okay. Please stand, sir, and state your name. David Wayne Hooper. Mr. Hooper, you are Miss Sam's. Uncle. Which would make you her mother's brother, is yes, that correct? Yes, ma'am. What information do you have about this paternity mystery? Well, in you know, 77, 78, when my sister moved to my hometown, uh, she was with another man at this time, um, the man that she had mentioned earlier. About a year or so went by and he was gone, okay? And um, at that time, my sister had conversation with my father, things saying that she had been a little late. A little further down the line, Mr. Doris comes into the picture. They fell in love, they got married real quick. Um, and then right after the baby was born, they just disappeared. You believe your sister was already pregnant before she got into the relationship with Mr. Doris? Unfortunately, yes, ma'am. I truly believe she was. But you don't and know that for sure. No, and let's right. be... Not a, not a fact, no. No. Sir. Okay. No, and is that during the time when she was with this other gentleman? You knew her to be with this other... This, this is right after he had gone to jail. The other man would have been in prison when I was born, okay? However, he was not incarcerated during the time that I would have been conceived. That's the only thing he and I can come up with because nobody's ever told me or told him or told our family why one day these people just pack up with my other siblings and myself, a new baby, and just take off to California in a car. And we well, did that because your mom's mom was out there. She'd been she... out there the whole time. Right. And let's be fact. clear, nobody wants this other man. No, but I'm not. No, oh. nobody uh, wants this other man to be my father. Let's be clear about well, that. My word ain't good enough. No, it's not good enough because your dates aren't good enough. The documents prove otherwise. Your word is not good enough right now. And that's why you came here. Yeah. And in light of the testimony presented today, especially from Mr. Hooper, who indicated that he truly believed that she was pregnant at that time when she met Mr. Doris. Additionally, the paperwork you uncovered after her death and also the statement she made to you on her deathbed. This is all sufficient evidence you are hereby ordered to go immediately, submit to a paternity test, and return to this courtroom where I will read you the results. Are we clear? Thank you, Your, yes, Honor. Your Honor. Court is adjourned. I'm a basket of emotions. I am scared. I'm excited. I am nervous. I am terrified. I don't know. I won't be relieved until this is over. She kills me. To just for her to tell me I'm not her dad. Well, I know deep in my heart I am. We're back in session in the case of Sam's versus Doris. Both parties have submitted to the DNA testing that was ordered, and I have the results for you. Before I get to those results, is there anything you'd like to say? Your Honor, I still believe she's my daughter. I have no reason why not to believe it. No reason, no doubt. Miss Sam's, is there anything you'd like to say? I hope he is my father but I just cannot get over the fact that my mother amended a birth certificate. And that's exactly why this courtroom exists, to bring clarity to situations like this so families know how to move forward. I have your results for you. Are you ready? As ready as I'm gonna be. Jerome, the envelope. Thank you, sir. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Sam's versus Doris. When it comes to 36-year-old Diane Sam's, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Doris, you are not her father. <laughs> I'm so very sorry. <laughs> I told you I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I knew. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> 
I know this was not the news you wanted. What, what are we gonna do? <laughs> Starts a whole what, new chapter over again. What, what are there we, we go, no. Mr. Hooper. There we go. What, what? Family, the truth is a catalyst for a new years. beginning. 36 years. It can be if you allow it to be. It gives us clarity. You don't have to feel out of place anymore. Now you can choose your place. And that's different. Amen. The truth gives you power. Amen. Right? I, I, and as you look to Mr. Doris... I feel so... And blessed. I have never seen this before. But when I went to read those results and I got that envelope, he held the picture of you and him up to his heart, facing forward. I have never seen... A father do that. He loves me. He loves you. I know he loves me. And in his mind, in his heart, you're his little girl. Like and it. look, you're holding his hand in this moment because you're there for him. <laughs> and he's been there for you. That's what's important. Mr. Lee, you say your wife, Ms. Lee, conceived a child after cheating numerous times during your marriage. Yes, Your Honor. Now, you claim your family disowned you because of her infidelity, and now... Your marriage is on the brink of divorce. As, yes, Your Honor. You petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove that you are not the father of Ms. Lee's 11-month-old daughter, Carolyn Lee. Ms. Yes, Lee, you admit to cheating on your husband. However, you say the paternity test will prove that he is the father. Yes, Your Honor. You're hoping that these results will save your marriage. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Lee, how did you and Mr. Lee meet? Tell me that. Um, I was actually getting ready to go on a date with somebody, and I got a phone call from a friend of mine to come to this hotel party to meet somebody else that actually wasn't even Mr. Lee. And I get there, and our eyes met, and we kind of fell in love at first sight. We started talking that night. I heard him speaking a little bit of Spanish, and we started making out the whole night. We actually we kissed heavily that whole night. We did not have sex, though. We just made out. The next morning, um, we exchanged numbers that night. We actually had to exchange our names as well because we made out the whole night and didn't even remember each other's names. The next day, I called him, went and picked him up, and he took my grandmother out with us on, on our first date, and that was it for me. I knew that he was the one. So that night, when we went back to the room, back to my house, we had sex. <laughs> I figured he took my grandmother out. You know, That's we all you need. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Might we as well give it up then, right now. Yeah. Um, Mr. Lee, you knew she was the one, too? Yes, Your Honor. But you also say she cheated. Yes, Your Honor. We met, like she said. Uh, we got engaged about a week later on Valentine's Day. I was trying to be a little romantic. I've been lonely for a long time, not really able to find a woman that I can really communicate with very well. So we got engaged that night. The distance was starting to get to her because I, at the time I was living over an hour away, Your Honor. She went ahead and moved in with me. I mean, that she, she stayed there with me for a few days. And then like the following week, she uh, started cheating on me with a guy she claimed that looked like Bon Jovi. She, she, she has- The following week? Yeah, well, she said he looked like Bon Jovi. I said he looks more like the Wolfman. The dude Ms. slept Lee? on a cot. You cheated? I have a, a celebrity week obsession. later? Yes, I have a celebrity obsession in this guy that I... He looked like Bon Jovi. He's just jealous because... The know, man lived on a on cot him. and played a but guitar. But wait a minute. You just said fish. you were in love with Mr. Yes. Lee. He, he with was the one. He took your grandmother Amber. out and that's all you needed. So you had sex with him without protection. Well... And he's the one. And then you engaged. And then you, one week later... Well, I did, like I said, he looked like Bon Jovi and he was flirting with me. I have, I really do have a big celebrity More like Frank but Stein's Ms. And Lee, you do I understand. figured if I cheated on him, he would break up with me. I had been staying at his house and his family was just, it was a really close environment and I didn't come from that. There was easier ways to break up with me. I didn't come from a really close... Oh, wait, no, no, hold on. You could have just said, okay, yeah, we... Well, I want to understand... But he didn't break up with me. I want to understand this. You had a celebrity obsession, so you said... If you cheated on him, he would break up with you? Yeah, I Why did on... you want to break up? He had a really close family life, and I didn't think I was the right person for him. But I don't like really to be the one breaking up. Life. That kind of that kind of ended when you cheated on me. Mm. How did that end when she cheated? Well, Mr. Lee? she cheated on me, and I'm like, well, you know, we're engaged. Mistakes happen. And so I, I loved her too, so we worked it out. But the next night after she was supposed to pick me up from work and didn't. 
uh, my, my cousin, his wife did instead. They told me, well, you know, we kind of caught her cheating on you. What did they tell you specifically? They told me that they found her naked in his trailer with him. Oh, but I wasn't cheating that day. I was just hanging out with him and his sister. I do admit to cheating twice That's with this cheating time, but I, it was not that time. No, if this you... was after I'd already cheated. I wasn't cheating anymore. Oh, so I, then was... that was just post. Yes, I had let... So it's the same guy. So you yes. figured, you But know, you were just you hanging out with him and his I'm sister. hanging with the sister. But you know that's not right. So wait a minute. You all started this... It was a very... Um, ...off like you were star-crossed lovers that found each other. Now... It turned sour real quick. I just... And so how much cheating has there been? I've only cheated on him with two men. I got a little pissed off because, I mean, at the time, you know, my family disowned me. I had no friends. Why did she your family disown you? Because she, she cheated me. on me and I chose her over them and they didn't like that. So it burned so a lot of bridges. So she cheated on you. They told you we don't, we don't want you to be with her anymore. Yes. Mm -hmm. we... And I didn't do what they wanted, so they threw me out. Just because you went back to somebody? It's, they threw it's you out? It's up, I know, but... He was spending all right. call, call You whatever. know she's cheated on you with two guys. Then you find out she's pregnant. Yes. All right. When you find out she's pregnant, do you believe the child is yours? Yeah, at first, she and my wife. Wouldn't... I mean, if, if you were in my shoes, wouldn't you believe that? I don't know. I mean... <laughs> yeah, I get it. I'm not gonna sit up here and lie. I, I, after and what stuff. she said... I mean, she's no, no. cheated on me before, but I figured, why not stick around? Things had gotten a little better. Yeah, things so had gotten So you felt better. like you could trust. I, I felt like I could trust her. I felt like that this was my kid. But now you're standing in court with a marriage on the brink of divorce. This is correct. And now you have doubts. Yeah, I have doubts because she revealed but to see, me that... He was there for me, but he never acknowledged the baby, really. He never sang to her. He never talked to her during the... Going for ultrasounds. He was either asleep in the room or he wouldn't even go. I worked late nights. He so was yeah, emotionally I was absent. Sleeping. Yes. And you were emotionally absent, Mr. Lee, what, because you didn't believe the child was well, yours? Well, after about a week later, after we find out she's pregnant, she told me she cheated on me again. And that's where this whole allegation oh. came on. It's like, oh, by the way, I slept with another guy. So... Oh, man. So one month into the pregnancy... One week into the pregnancy. And then the so, timeline started jumping. Wait a minute. First wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. One week into the pregnancy, she tells you she cheated on you? That is correct. Yes. For the third time. Where was I during this conversation? Oh, well, you mean serious? You no. say it didn't happen? No. The last time I cheated was in Montana when I was told he was cheating on me with a coworker. She told me. So wait, explain to me, Mr. Lee, how did how did this go down? What, what happened? Well, she found out she was pregnant. We went to verify it. She told you you may not be the father. Yeah, she told me I may not be the father because she slept with another guy once. And you say you didn't tell him that? No. Well, now that's not a conversation you forget. That's so, it. Mr. Lee, you. what did she sit you down? She told you on the phone. She, she told just... you where? told me after we left the OBGYN. And then she's like, well, you may not be the father. And then what did you say? I said, well, we'll just kind of ride it out and see what's going to happen here. Because, I mean, there's still a chance I could have been the father. So I didn't want to just abandon her during pregnancy with what she might be my kid. I mean, what kind of so father would I be if I, if I didn't at least see? She cheats on you the first time. Yes. You take her back. Your family disowns you. Yeah. She cheats on you again. You take her back. Yeah. Then one week into the pregnancy, she tells you it may not be yours because she slept with somebody else. Yes, Your Honor. And you stay with her. Yes, Your Honor. Despite her courts and despite everything, I do love her. I mean, I realize people, people have problems. People do things that they're not proud of. I mean, who, who among us has not? Now you stand here after saying you love her and you don't leave her, but now you're saying you're gonna divorce her. Yeah, I've had enough of it. <laughs> we just can't live with it. The love's still there, we just, if the baby's We're not going his, through we the motions. stay together. We, we've decided that if the baby isn't mine, we're just not gonna stay together. If it is, we're gonna try to patch things up, work things out, try to move on from this whole experience. Is that the agreement of what's gonna happen? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. That is the agreement of what's going to happen. I mean, I have the divorce papers right here. You do? 
Yes. Jerome, let me see those, please. So you actually have started the process of filing for divorce? Yeah. We went ahead, got the papers, and we agreed upon this. You know, the so DNA. these DNA results, they really do mean they, they're everything. They're make or break at this point. I mean, I've, it's like you said, you know, I put up with a lot. And why didn't I leave her years ago? Because, I mean, I was always hoping to, to uh, make things right. And when you throw a kid into the mix, it complicates a lot of things. So, Ms. Lee, why do you cheat on him I so much? I never really saw a good relationship. I love my mom to death, but nobody in my family really showed me how to be in a relationship. My grandfather died when I was six, and he was the only... Him and my grandmother were the only decent ones I really saw. So you basically were flying by the seat of your pants? Yes, Your Honor. Literally? Yeah, literally. <laughs> So yes. instead of working on a relationship, you'd go outside of it to yes. look for your answers. Yes. What did you say, Mr. Lee? We really haven't even had sex in about two years. Since really? I thought that I was pregnant, we yeah. haven't had any intimacy. I mean, so it's this is really affected. It's really affected us. I mean, I it's in my family. I mean, my biological family is just uh, the relationship is so strained. My family doesn't even call me on my birthday. Your family disowned you. Yes. And after all of that, all you've been through, now the marriage that you gave it up, you gave everything up for this relationship. Which is why I've worked so hard to try to fix things. I've given everything up for this woman. I can't just abandon ship. I mean, I've given... It's all or nothing with me. You know, I put everything I had into it, and the cheating continued, but I still tried to mend things simply because of how much time, effort, how many bridges I had to burn just to build this castle. Wow. If you find out today that Carolyn is not your child, then this is all for nothing. That is correct, but like I said, it's it's complicated when you put a child in the mix. You're right, sir. I mean, I just... I was... <sighs> That's all right. <laughs> I... Take your time. I was there when she was born. <laughs> I signed the birth certificate and everything. I'd like to see that, Jerome. You were there from the beginning. And I can see that you love her. So you sign the birth certificate. I just don't want to live a lie. I want to know if this is my daughter or not. So, Ms. Lee, if he is not Carolyn's biological father, do you know who is? No, Your Honor. I'd like to hear from your witness. Ma'am, please stand. State your name. Patricia Peterson. Ms. Peterson, you are Ms. Lee's... Mother. Mother. What do you make of your daughter's infidelities? I mean, she's been very honest and just basically saying, I, I really was clueless. She never saw really any happiness in, the, in my household. I feel bad for that. Um, I was not a great mother to her, but I also, she got kind of taken by my mother and my stepfather. They had her most of the time. But she did not see good things going on in the household. She saw a lot of fighting. She saw a lot of dishonesty. And so she got into the dishonesty herself. So she lived what she saw. When you look at the state of her marriage and what she has done to that marriage, I'm what are you thinking? I'm really surprised he stuck around. I'm really proud of him that he has. That takes a lot of guts. But I now just, I just want we've to... got a young, innocent little girl, yes. your granddaughter, and we're in a situation where we're not sure if Mr. Lee, your daughter's husband, is in fact the child's father. I believe that's his, and I've talked to her many times. <clears throat> I've given her opportunities to tell me. Because you've asked. Oh, I've asked tell many me the times. Because I said, I'm not doing any of this. I'm not, if you cheated on him, I'm not having anything to do with this. She swears she didn't, and I honestly believe that that little angel right there belongs to, to Brian. She didn't admitted we? to cheating three times. Yes. In this courtroom. Yes. And Mr. Lee says that one week into the pregnancy, she says, I cheated. Unfor I slept with somebody else. Unfortunately, I don't know about that part. I know about the other cheating. I don't know about the one when she was pregnant. We were kind of... Um, at odds. Yeah, we were at odds. We go back and forth. We've had rough times because we're a lot of alike. And so, Ms. Lee, I need to give you this 
opportunity. Because, you know, it seems like you're at a point in your life where you just want to lay it on the line. Got this beautiful little girl. Just want to tell the truth, get it done. Is there anything you haven't told us? Is there anyone else you haven't admitted to? No, Your Honor. Okay. I think it's time for the results, family. Do you agree? Yeah. Let's have them. She's crying. Jerome, thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Lee versus Lee, pertaining to 11-month-old Carolyn Lee, it has been determined by this court Mr. Lee, you are Carolyn's father. Yes, I told you. I told you. I told you. I'm sorry. I tried to tell him I've been faithful to him. I made some mistakes. I did, but I've been doing a lot better. I just want us to be a family and just start over. <laughs> what do you think, Mr. Lee? Can you try that? I think I won't have any problems trying that. I'm very happy for you both. Oh my God. I really am. Mostly I'm happy for Carolyn because oh she has God. her mom and her dad. And you guys are willing to give it a shot. But this is going to take some work. Sure. You two have a lot of water under the bridge. You have a lot that has transpired. Trust issues. And you, Ms. Lee, have admitted that you have some issues with understanding, processing, and being able to operate in relationships because you don't have a point of reference. Yes, Your Honor. You gotta be able to do the work to change that. I've started therapy recently, and they're Wonderful. going to start doing family therapy so he and I can go That's together. fantastic! <laughs> That's what I wanna hear. Ms. Polzin, you've summoned Mr. Callender to court in hopes of salvaging what is left of your relationship. You say he denies your daughter Zoe, but today you intend to prove paternity. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Callender, you say you love Zoe and have created a bond with her, but Ms. Polzin has a cheating past, and that is why you are convinced you aren't Zoe's father. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. So, Ms. Polzin, what is the current nature of your relationship with the defendant? Um, we've been on again, off again, Your Honor. Um, and the end of most of our arguments is he likes to throw that in my face, whether Zoe's his or not. And Anthony knows that that's his daughter. I mean, without a doubt. But, Mr. Callender, you do question it. Yes, ma'am. It's like a dark cloud hovering over us. Keeping us, I think it's preventing us from moving forward. Just the uncertainty, not knowing 100% that I'm her father. Do you feel that dark cloud? Yes, Your Honor, and it needs to come to a Specifically, stop. Specifically, how is it affecting you and your relationship with Mr. Callender? It keeps us in constant turmoil and constant fussing and fighting over it, and I'm just ready for it to be clarified and for it to be done. So, how did you meet? <clears throat> We originally met when we were younger, and we had a relationship, and we went our separate ways, and we both I've gotten long-term relationships, and my last long-term relationship, um, we were having hard times towards the end of it. It was about nine years, and he hit me up on Facebook, Mr. Mr. Callender did, and we just started talking, rekindling our love again, and uh, we started seeing each other again. Did you know she was in another relationship when you pursued her? I did, but she was... She was said they were separated, living in different, different rooms, and she was in the process of moving her things out of the residence. So you thought this relationship was pretty much over? Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. Did you have to sneak around, though? She would come see me on lunch breaks, and, you know, as she got off work... Your Honor, I was not trying to be disrespectful to a man that I'd been with. He knew it was over. We were both doing our own thing, and I wasn't trying to flaunt my new relationship in front of him. So you were sneaking around at lunchtime and after work. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> So, you all started this relationship even though you weren't quite finished with the last one. 
Correct. How soon after you officially start getting into a relationship with Miss Polson do you find out she's pregnant, Mr. Callender? Uh, well, it was about a week after she had moved into her, her apartment after getting most of her things out of the residence. A week? <laughs> but I was only having sexual contact with Mr. Callender. Uh, we were, me and my ex were living in separate rooms. We had a lot of assets together and we were living in separate rooms. There was a lot of things to work out between that relationship. So she finally gets out from this relationship with the ex and a week later, she says to you, I'm pregnant. Exactly. What are you thinking when she says that, Mr. Callender? I'm not at the residence with them while she's staying there, so I have no idea what they're doing. I can only go based on what she's telling me. What she's telling me, she's staying in a different room, but I'm not there. How do I know they're not in the same bedroom? So, how... I mean, did your spidey sense go up? I mean, what... <laughs> After she moved out, next thing you know, he shows up with soup and a teddy bear because she's sick, but how did he know that she was sick if they haven't been communicating? Soup and a teddy bear? He would bring me flowers to work and brought soup, left a soup and a teddy bear on my front porch and... But this is a man that you were allegedly not sleeping with. Right. Bringing soups and teddy bears when you don't feel well. Hmm. I know that doesn't sound right. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> it definitely doesn't sound like it was completely over. It was. He was trying to hang on to something that wasn't there. So how did you find out about the soup and the teddy bear, Mr. Callender? Uh, I was going through her phone looking for a number that I dialed from her phone and I'd seen that his number was in there and you know, just out of curiosity, I clicked on it and it said they had had conversations for 30 minutes, another one for an hour, you know, and I asked her about it, what they had been talking about, and she said, oh, it was just, uh, he was wanting to know if she wanted to get a few more things from the residence that she had left behind, uh, you know, and wanted the couch. And I was like, well, why does it take an hour conversation to decide if you want a couch or not? Right. And you never knew. It wasn't like she was having these conversations in front of you. Yeah. When she got the soup and the teddy bear, did she come home and say, honey, guess what my ex did with his crazy self? No, actually, it had come up uh, a year or two later. She got mad at me. It was like, well, at least he at least he cared enough to bring me soups and stuff or teddy bears. You know, you never done this type of stuff for me. And just throw it in my face, you know, and I'm like, really? It never fails. <laughs> The arguments are when it always comes out. Right, Jerome? Yep, I like soup. <laughs> <laughs> so take me to the birth. When Zoe was born, were you there, Mr. Callender? Yes, Your Honor. You, you participated? Yes, Your Honor. Showed up for the birth? Uh, that and mostly every doctor visit. E oh, every doctor's uh, visit. So even though you were doubtful, you still participated? Yes, Your Honor because you wanted to be there. I wanted to be there for the baby and for, for Rachel. Okay. And so, when she was born, did you sign her birth certificate? They wouldn't allow me to. Uh, it was like a kick to the chest. And so then your doubts started spinning? Yes. And a week or two after that, she was in contact with her ex and he made the question, could it be mine? Oh, the ex said, could it be mine? Yes. And now, how did you find this out? I was standing around when he had made the call and was just listening in, and I heard him say, is, is there a chance it's mine? But according to Rachel, they hadn't had any kind of sexual contact for three or four months before we had started seeing each other. So... So why would he ask that then? That's... That's another one of the reasons why I have the doubts. But if you do the math, we were in North Carolina in December, and she was born in September. Oh, well, shouldn't he be able to do the math, too? But, Miss Polson, I mean, when another man calls you on your phone to just say, well, let me just ask you this, could she be mine? Well, he... I, I, that means there's some part of this math, some factor in this equation that we're missing. That sounds like... 
he feels like he could have been sexually active with you during the window of time the baby was conceived. Because why would he ask? I think he was doing that just to get get a rise out of me because, like I said, once he learned of my new relationship... That could make sense that he'd be calling to try to hurt you, but he's bringing teddy bears and soups and you're talking on the phone with him for 30 minutes and an hour. So that doesn't add up. That if was... somebody's trying to hurt you, you don't sit on the phone with them for 30 minutes or an hour. Right, but that was before I'd learned I was pregnant. But he had made the comment before... As you, as you were getting the last few things out of your house, he had made the comment, you said, that he would ask for one last shebang. Oh, really? Yes, he did. Uh -huh. But you declined? No, of course I declined. I had been over that relationship for a very long time, and I had only been sexually active with Mr. Callender. And he knows that. I think if he knew that, he wouldn't be here. <laughs> Mr. Callender, you brought a witness. I'd like to hear from her. Ma'am, please stand. Step over to the podium. State your name for the court. Karen Allen. Ms. Allen, what relationship are you to Mr. Callender? I'm his mother. You are his mother? Yes, ma'am. What do you know about the paternity surrounding baby Zoe? Do you believe your son is her biological father? I hope and pray that he is. We have a very strong bond. And I can see how emotional that makes you. Yes, ma'am. You love the baby? Yes, ma'am. This relationship started with a hot mess. It was a hot mess when it started. Only gotten worse through the years. And the squabbling back and forth. I don't want Zoe to hear, you may not be my child, or this may not be my child. Right. Yes. And she's at an age where she could hear that. Yes. And possibly even be able to understand... She will. She exactly would ...exactly what someone's saying. Absolutely. And between the arguing they do, it, it could be said and then not realize that she is in hearing distance. And that would break my heart for yes. her to hear that. So, Ms. Allen, do you believe this relationship can withstand the realization that Zoe is not your son's biological child? I don't believe it would. So, Honestly. you believe if she's not his, this relationship is over? Yes, ma'am. So, that means there is a lot at stake. Yes, ma'am. So... Ms. Posen, you say you are sure Mr. Calendar is your child's biological father? Yes, Your Honor. I have an exhibit. You have an exhibit yes. you brought? Yes. Please step over and show the court what you brought. These are reasons why I believe that Mr. Calendar is the father. Him and Zoe both have the same attitude. Um, they are very particular about things, such as the way they like their foods and things like that, and if they don't get their way, they'll throw a fit till they get what they want. And I do not act like that um, at all. Same temperament. Yes. Okay. Yes. No protection. We were... When we were together and having sex, sexual relations, we did not use protection. The tan skin, I am obviously very pale, and she has a tan. Zoe is, looks just like him. You, you can't deny that. Um, the tan skin, the dark hair. And then this is Mr. Callender as a baby, and this is Zoe. The, it's identical. It's identical. You cannot deny her. Looks just like him. So... Mom, Ms. Allen, when you look at this side by side, do you see a resemblance? Do you see this incredible resemblance that Ms. Polson says she sees? I wish I did. I believe Zoe looks just like her mother. And Zoe is tanned. But we do a lot of outside playing. Children tan. Thank you so much, Ms. Polson. You may step back to the plaintiff's podium. 
Reason why I asked mom, because a lot of time moms know, grandma... Grandma has that supernatural spidey sense. <laughs> I believe that the temperament is a learned behavior. He's spoiled. I, I did that, and I'm around Zoe. <laughs> and I take the blame. I take the blame. What I, uh... No protection. She was with the guy. I'm sure they didn't use protection either. Uh, tan skin, I mean, everybody... I'm not the only person in the, on the planet that has tan skin, you know. The guy, he's got a little tan himself, so... And so he doesn't have the black hair. And I can see this is really affecting you both. Like, you don't know. I can, I can look at both of you and see this really troubles you because you have very real doubts. Yes, ma'am. With that said, I think we've heard enough testimony. Mm -hmm. And it's time for the results. Jerome? <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Polson versus Calendar, when it comes to Zoe Calendar, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Calendar, you are the father. <laughs> Oh, gee. Thank you. you are the father. And I'm so happy I could give you the result all of you so desperately wanted. And now we can figure out where to go from here. I want his name put on the birth certificate. <laughs> Not just about being on that birth certificate. That is important. But it's also about being a consistent and supportive dad in her life. Right? And so now that we have no more doubt, what are we gonna do with this relationship? Definitely work on it and move forward to the next steps. Good. She can know that she has the love of both parents, her grandparents, she deserves to have her village. Every child does. 